Hi, this is Justin from Sonic Scoop. I'm here at Joel Lambert Mastering, where I've just finished my mastering work for the day, and I'm ready to broach a very controversial subject on the Sonic Scoop video blog. That subject, can you master your own recordings? And the answer is, well, first of all, I'm biased, right? Because other people pay me to master their recordings. But I also want to be honest with you, so the answer is, Yes, you can master your own recordings. By one definition, it's actually very easy to master your own recordings. By another definition, however, it's literally impossible to master your own recordings. So what does that mean? Well, first we've got to figure out what the definition of mastering is. So by the simple definition, mastering is just creating the final format from which you're going to make your copies, your commercial copies that you're going to distribute, whether that's online or through brick and mortar stores or whatever it is. And back in the day, this was a very involved process, right? People were mixing a tape and you had to take all these disparate tape mixes and get them onto the primary distribution channel that time, vinyl records, right? So someone had to cut an acetate. This is a very uh, involved tedious process. Most people who are mixing records don't want to do this part of the process. It's very technical and difficult to do. And you'd have to take all these disparate tapes, get them onto one record. That was your master from which you're going to stamp out copies. But today, obviously, the technology is a lot simpler and easier. If you have Pro Tools or Logic or a free version of GarageBand with your Mac, you can spit out uh, the right resolution file you can even drag it into iTunes and put in your titles, you know, your uh, song names, your album name, your artist name. Uh, so creating the master is actually really easy. But there's another second piece of mastering that mastering engineers did um, almost as an ancillary kind of add-on, and that is while they were getting all of these different mixes onto the one final master, they would add maybe EQ, maybe some songs sounded nice with a slight bass boost and others needed the bass brought down a little bit. On one song you might need a slight treble boost, on another you might bring down uh, the treble a little bit. You might add compression and uh, excitement and uh, height and depth and width. And that's really the remaining value in mastering. But the remaining value in mastering is not just that sweetening. Because anyone can do that sweetening. And those tools can be part of your mixing process. The remaining value of mastering and of mastering engineers is that you have a separate person who's not the mix engineer doing those tweaks in a room that's especially suited to the task. It's kind of a third party independent QC of your own mixes. It's someone double checking your work and making sure that your mixes sounded as great as you intended them to sound and hopefully a little bit better, right, still. So on a really, really great mix, what the mastering engineer might do could be very, very slight. Maybe it's just bringing down the bass by a dB because it's a little hot in one spot and we're able to check that out in a room that's perfectly balanced to uncover those little details. But it could also mean a lot more than that. It could be mean, you know, you might have problem frequencies, there might be resonances in your mixing room that we can help you discover. Now, why do you need an independent third party to do this? Well, the answer there is you don't really need anything technically, but I think there are reasons you might want one. So here are some of the biggest challenges facing mixing engineers. Bass in the room is number one. I mean, this is, uh, I'm right now writing a uh, article series for Joel Lambert Mastering on uh, mixed tips from your mastering engineer. And item number one is low end for a reason, right? Uh, in many mixing rooms, you could be sitting over here listening and everything sounds nice. And then you move over here and the bass disappears like six inches and it changes wildly. That's because of room modes and room nodes and most rooms that folks are mixing in are not as balanced as one like this, where the bass is just even from space to space in the room. And that's by design. That's something a great mastering room needs to do. Uh, similar things can happen with a high frequency. If you don't have an appropriate balance of absorption versus diffusion, you can make what seem like great choices in the high frequencies for your room, but you take it to other places and it doesn't translate as you expect. Another thing to remember is if you're mixing on even really nice mixing speakers that cost more than $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 speakers, 
without fail, they're not going to have the kind of completely even balance that you're going to find in mastering speakers. And to a degree, your mixes will sound like the inverse of your speakers. Think about this for a second. If you have very bright speakers, or even just slightly bright speakers, your mixes are going to sound a little dark in the end, right? Because your speakers are giving you this extra shimmer and shine and high frequency, so you're not pushing those things. By contrast, if you have speakers that sound a little bit dark, again, your mixes will sound a bit like the inverse of your speakers, where you may push the high frequencies a little bit more than you intend or realize. If you have speakers that sound very kind of uh, scooped and hyped, um, you're probably going to end up with mixes that sound a little kind of flat and boxy and dull and boring. Meanwhile, if you have speakers that really push that mid-range forward, so you make sure that things fit there and that things are e exciting without sounding cluttered or annoying or piercing, well, you're probably on a set of speakers where you're not really going to hear the low end and the high end appropriately, and then you have the same issue again. So in the mix room, multiple speakers can help. I have more details uh, about this on the Joe Lambert Mastering blog, uh, mixing tips from uh, your mastering engineer. But even if you get this really well settled, there's still tremendous value in uh, having your mixes heard in a great listening environment on these kind of uh, amazing speakers where you're going to make choices that are going to translate everywhere. And you can say with confidence, yeah, we got it we finished this record, we were able to, with great detail and precision, make those last few choices without ever having to second guess ourselves ever again. And that kind of confidence and peace of mind, you get out of a space like this and you get out of working with someone who's listened to so many uh, masters in one space uh, you're, you're only going to get that out of that situation. You're not going to get it out of just making things louder or EQing things yourself in the same mix room that you mix the damn thing in, right? So there's the answer to the question. Uh, by one definition, if mastering just means creating the final format you're going to make copies from, yes, anyone can master, and you can master something you recorded or mixed or whatever. But if mastering means an independent QC by someone who is specialized on that end of the process in a room specifically devoted to that task and designed for that task, if that's what mastering means, then it's literally impossible to master your own recordings. Uh, I encourage you to learn more about the mastering process and even try it. Maybe try it for uh, if there are mixers kind of junior to you who look up to you and respect you and are always asking you for tips. You can try, you know, mastering some of their stuff. You might even just feel comfortable doing the last bit of the, the mastering process for kind of lower budget projects. Um, and it might turn out great. But I'd encourage you. Uh, it doesn't have to be me. Sit down with a mastering engineer in a room like this one and hear your mixes for the first time and the kind of detail you're going to get out of this space. I'm amazed when clients come in and they sit down on the couch and I'll be kind of doing my thing when I have this attended session and I'll start to get worried because I think that they're really bored because it's really quiet behind me. and. They're not saying anything, and I'm like, oh my God, it's just the most boring thing in the world watching me you know, twiddle these knobs. And I'll turn around, and their jaws will just be dropped. And it's just because it's an amazing environment to listen to music in. And it's not an amazing environment because these speakers are hyped up and they're meant to dazzle you from minute one. It's because you're hearing things in such detail and such clarity. Uh, that you're hearing things in the mixes you've never noticed before, never heard before. You're hearing the subtlety of uh, attack and release settings on a compressor that make you go, oh wow, I finally get what this is doing and what my bus compressor choices did to the mix. And it can be so informative and it can, uh, you can leave the space, you know, for the first time feeling like you really understand what's going on in your mixes. It can really change your mixing for the better for life. So I'd recommend you do it. I recommend you come down to a great mastering studio if you can and hear your own mixes on a great system. Even that is worth the price of admission. 
But with that said, you know, mix it to sound mastered. Ideally, your mastering engineer doesn't want to have to do a lot only because the better the tracks are coming in, the better we can make them, right? We can either help you solve, solve problems, and we're happy to help you solve problems, but better yet, we can take great track to perfection, to being something that's really genuinely memorable. Uh, and that's what I love doing. So I hope this doesn't feel like too much of a sales pitch. But when I start to talk about mastering, I get excited. So at the end of the day, you have my blessing as a mastering engineer to compress your own mixes or limit your own mixes or EQ your own mixes if that's what you want to do. I do have guidelines about how far you should go with those things if you plan on working with a mastering engineer. But on the projects where you really care, where these mixes, these recordings are going to become part of your calling card forever, you definitely want the independent QC at the end of the process. A little bit of specialization can be a very good thing. And when you let the mastering engineer obsess about things like high frequency and low frequency balance, do we have just the right amount of shimmer on top and boom on bottom, it lets you obsess about the mix. And that's not to say you shouldn't be thinking about the high end and the low end and the depth and the width when you're mixing. You absolutely should. But you shouldn't be obsessing about it. What you should be obsessing about is the mix. By making bold choices with balances and effects and these tweaks that only a mixing engineer can do. And I've seen so many new mixers get distracted by obsessing about the mastering engineer stuff, the, the high frequencies and the low frequencies and the boom and the width, and they forget to make sure that their guitar solo is louder than the hi-hat, right? They forget to make sure that the bass and the kick drum are kind of sitting generally well together. They forget to make sure that the vocal is an appropriate level throughout, that there's some kind of dynamic contours to the song, even if it's intended to be a kind of, you know, crushed, uh, uh, dynamically compressed thing, that you can give the impression of those dynamic changes. Those are the things you want to be obsessing about. And you can't obsess about them when you're obsessing about that two-track mastering engineer stuff, what's happening on the bus. So. Get your bus processing in order if you want to use a bus compressor. I have great tips on how to do that over at the Joel Lambert Mastering uh, blog. And we'll write more about it on Sonic Scoop as always. Uh, thanks for joining me. This has been Justin Coletti on the Sonic Scoop video blog. See you guys again soon. Thanks.